Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Smith, your host. The Canada Pension Plan CPP will be significantly increased by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, affecting millions of seniors' finances. This move, one of the most significant CPP upgrades in recent history, increases payments by $1,560 a year for all claimants and $800 for seniors. This $2,360 annual rise is more than a figure. It represents renewed optimism, financial security, and recognition of our seniors' vital efforts to establishing our beloved Canada. This announcement has far-reaching effects on seniors and the economy. This extensive analysis examines every facet of this statement and its immediate impact on seniors' lives, exploring the economic effects on our nation and answering many Canadians' questions since this news occurred. This in-depth investigation will inform you whether you're a senior caring for elderly parents or a concerned citizen interested in how this transition will affect society. First, let's analyze these numbers. The first is a $1,560 annual boost for all CPP participants, or $130 each month. All CPP beneficiaries, regardless of age or quantity, receive this rise. The second component is $800 annually for seniors, or $66.67 more each month. These two hikes could raise eligible senior CPP payouts by $200 per month. For instance, a senior receiving the maximum CPP retirement benefit of $1,253.59 per month in 2023. This rise is over 16%, but what does this mean practically? For many seniors, $200 a month might help them purchase healthier food, keep up with growing utility prices, cover pharmaceutical costs, pay rent or mortgage, or save for emergencies. Understanding that $200 a month may not seem like much may change your life. It can improve quality of life and financial security for many fixed income seniors. Understanding the background of this announcement helps us understand its significance. Like many affluent nations, Canada's population is aging. Statistics Canada reported that 19% of Canadians, or 7.3 million, were 65 or older on July 1, 2022. Financial stability for a growing number of seniors is complicated by this demographic trend. For years, the 1965 Canada Pension Plan has guided retirement planning. In recent years, rising life expectancy and living costs have raised concerns about its appropriateness. This increase comes amid growing inflation, which is eroding fixed incomes and raising health care expenditures. A housing market with rising rents and property taxes and the COVID-19 pandemic's lingering economic impacts, which have depleted many seniors' savings. In this setting, the government's CPP payout increase addresses a serious social and economic need, as well as seniors' finances. To understand the magnitude of this announcement, compare it to past CPP upgrades. The 2016 CPP improvement was the last major revision. Starting in 2019, this amendment was phased in over seven years to enhance the maximum CPP retirement benefit by up to 50% for future retirees who contribute 40 years. The 2016 enhancement was large, but it targeted future retirees. In contrast, the recent announcement helps CPP recipients immediately. As of 2019, the maximum monthly CPP retirement pension at 65 was $1,154.58. It rose to $1,253.59 in 2023. The announced rise could raise this to $1,453.59. This is the largest CPP benefit increase in history, demonstrating the government's commitment to meeting seniors' immediate financial needs. This boosted news spread. Different Canadian groups reacted to it. Many senior advocacy groups applauded the move. It was a step toward assuring dignity and financial security for older Canadians, according to CARP. Mixed reactions from economists. Some applaud the initiative as a crucial stimulant for local economies, expecting that elder spending will boost small companies and create jobs. Others question the long-term viability and inflation implications of such rises. Although some opposition parties have criticized the increase for not going far enough to help elderly financially, most have backed it. A full evaluation of senior benefits and supports is desired. Businesses have been wary. While increasing consumer spending may assist the economy, CPP contributions to cover these larger payouts are a problem. When will these adjustments happen? Everyone wants to know. Starting January 1st, next year, the Prime Minister's office will phase in the $1,560 rise. The next fiscal quarter will see the $800 senior hike. By next year, all eligible seniors should receive their full higher benefits. This gradual strategy ensures a smooth transition and gives administrative systems time to adapt. This timescale is faster than prior CPP revisions, which took years. The government says they're prioritizing speed to meet seniors' immediate financial needs, 
They've stressed that this rapid rollout won't affect payment accuracy or reliability. CPP recipients should know that their benefits may increase gradually over the year rather than all at once. This steady increase can help seniors budget by allowing them to adapt their financial strategy. The eligibility criteria are simple. No matter their age or CPP amount, all claimants are eligible for the $1,560 boost. CPP retirement pensioners, disability beneficiaries, survivor beneficiaries, and the $800 senior specific boost are included. CPP recipients 65 and older can use this. Applicable to new and existing CPP pensioners. Note that existing CPP recipients will automatically get these increases. There's no need for further paperwork or applications. This automatic application ensures that all eligible seniors receive the increment without complicated application processes. Many seniors may worry about how the CPP hike would affect their other benefits. Old age security OS payments should not be affected by the CPP rise. OS is income tested except for very high income come earners vulnerable to OAS clawback. However, it may affect GIS payouts. Income tested GIS benefits may decrease for low income seniors with higher CPP income. Impact on provincial benefits varies by program and province. CPP benefits are taxable, thus there are tax ramifications. Some seniors will pay more taxes, but the income rise will offset this. Seniors must consider these effects while budgeting and planning. Most seniors will profit from the CPP pre-rise, but others may need to change their financial strategy to maximize their advantages. This rise makes it a good time to learn about CPP for individuals nearing retirement. You must be 60 and have made one valid CPP contribution to qualify. You can start getting your pension at 60 or 70, with your monthly payout increasing by a percentage for each month you postpone after 65. To apply, you'll need your social insurance number, direct deposit banking information, and pension start date. Apply online with My Service Canada account or download and mail the application form. Application processing can take 120 days. If approved, you'll receive a mail with your payment amount and start date. Remember, the increased increases make CPP application more beneficial than ever. Your financial status determines when to start your pension. This large CPP benefit increase is projected to have major economic effects. Over 6 million CPP users in 2022 will improve spending power by $14 billion annually. This equals a large economic stimulus package. Increased consumer spending is expected immediately. Local companies, especially in healthcare, leisure, and retail, benefit from seniors spending more on goods and services. For many seniors. This rise may enhance their diet, housing, or access to previously unaffordable services. Some elders may need less family support or social aid. Consumer spending growth may enhance GDP in the short term. This choice has beneficial short-term effects, but its long-term economic effects must be considered. Whether the CPP fund can maintain these higher payouts is crucial. The government must ensure CPP contributions and investment returns meet these greater payouts. Increased economic activity could cause inflation. The Bank of Canada must closely monitor this for inflation management. Higher CPP payouts may impact retirement decisions, with some workers retiring sooner knowing they'll have more retirement income. In sectors with aging workforces, this may affect labor market dynamics. But considerations include intergenerational equity and the balance between supporting current retirees and ensuring system sustainability for future generations. Canadian firms will be affected differently by the CPP pike. Senior spending may boost retail and service sectors. Local companies may benefit from increased sales. Healthcare and wellness sectors may rise as seniors with more disposable money spend more on health products and services. This may boost pharmaceutical, medical device, and wellness services. Travel and leisure companies may benefit if seniors spend extra income for travel and leisure. Seniors seeking help on managing their greater money may boost financial services industry. Finally, the CPP benefit hike signal a major change in Canada's senior support. The short-term effects are beneficial, helping millions of seniors financially, but the long-term effects are complex. Policymakers, economists, and citizens must monitor this transformation as we move forward. Ensuring that it improves seniors' financial security while sustaining Canada's pension system and economy. Now is the moment for Canadians, especially those nearing retirement age, to assess their financial plans, understand how these changes will affect them, and make informed retirement strategy decisions. By being educated and proactive, we can help Canada's future succeed.